We just had a midterm election in the United States, and the results were very surprising. And people right now are trying to understand what happened. Individuals, more conservative, independent, libertarian, and Republican, wondering how it could be that Democrats overperformed. There are a lot of questions. With dismal approval ratings for the president, overperformance in the polls by Republicans, massive gas prices, hyperinflation, this should have been a major victory for the Republicans. But it wasn't. With Democratic Party policies that have crashed the economy and uh, a, a foreign policy that has put us on course toward World War III, people are wondering, why would anybody vote for a Democrat? They even voted for a dead person. Democrat reelected in a landslide, even though he's dead. That's right. Tony DeLuca, who is not living and has not been living for just over a month, was reelected in a landslide. They don't know who they're voting for. They don't pay attention to the issues. They don't care. The Some people are going as far as saying Democrats support inflation and crime. I guess the big takeaway is libs want this. Crime, inflation, runaway homelessness, drug addiction, replacement migration. We all sort of assumed they would recoil at the brink, but no, they were like, yeah, this is what we voted for. The accusation that Democrats are voting for crime and inflation, uh, I think, is missing the point. I don't think they are. That's assuming that somebody's examining the situation, making a conscious decision about what's going to be best for the country and everybody. But I don't think that's what's driving the vote. I, don't, I think people are more likely voting out of collectivism. Uh, here's a table of individualism versus collectivism. And an individualist makes an individual decision, uh, while a collectivist will follow the group decision. I mean, which in this case, in politics, is the political party. So the political party will be making decisions, and then the members of that party and the followers follow along. So in other words... They're voting party and not really stopping to make a decision, thinking over issues, which is kind of the way democracy is supposed to work, uh, where an individual has a valued vote that expresses their individuality and their thoughtfulness. A form of collectivism is balkanization. Balkanization is the fragmentation of a larger region or state into smaller regions or states, which may be hostile or uncooperative with one another. It is usually caused as a geopolitical geopolit tool serving third parties with the justification of differences of ethnicity, culture, and religion and some other factors such as past grievances. Political and cultural balkanization in its formal sense. It's known as neo secessionism uh, or neo tribalism. That's the term used by Michel Mafasoli. And this is a phenomenon where the modern world and its meta narratives that have since uh, have held nations together, they basically implode. And so populations reorganize more and more around basic regional, religious, and often racial identities. Another form of collectivism is neo-tribalism. People seem to be dividing up into tribes. Neo-tribalism, also known as modern tribalism or new tribalism, is a sociological concept which postulates that human beings have evolved to live in tribal society as opposed to mass society, and thus will naturally form social networks constituting new tribes. This is part of postmodern theory. In chapter 14 of The Philosophy of Freedom, the question is asked, is individuality even possible? Consider, considering that we come from a tribal background of a race, tribe, nation, family, male or female groups, uh, we're active in a state, church, and so forth. So we have all kinds of connections in tribes as we grow up. And we, and we express the general characteristics of the community to which we belong. So is individuality even possible? 
Of course, the philosophy of freedom says that, yes, freedom is possible, and a big part of it is I consciousness. Now, the collectivist lives in a group we consciousness. Uh, they become our, a cell with, within the community, or you know, a, a bee within the beehive, in kind of a we consciousness where everybody has their role to play within the group collective. We all start out at this state, but then we develop ourselves and develop an I consciousness, which is key to individualism. In chapter one, Conscious Human Action in the Philosophy of Freedom, the first topic that's discussed is what's called the freedom of indifferent choice, which is a, one of the ways of making a choice is, say we're presented with possible action A, possible action B, which could be to vote for candidate A or to vote for candidate B. At this level of uh, making a choice, freedom of indifferent choice, it becomes a willful choice, which means the I, the individual, is indifferent, and he's operating out of the group conformity, group mind, so the choice is automatic. It just comes purely out of the will without any kind of a desire or any thought or anything. It's just an automatic reaction of uh, uh, following the condition and programming or instruction of the group. So the, the I, it's an indifferent choice because the I is not involved. There will always be a reason for that choice, but the individual may not even, or the group member may not even know what the reason is. It may be unconscious or it may be, you know, basically, you know, the group leaders may have the reasons and the members just follow along. The way to overcome this is through freedom of choice. And here we see... Out of the act of will, the I is activated. The, the choice comes out of the I as a free choice uh, determined by the I. So by developing I consciousness and an individuality, we can break through this collectivism that is really uh, making it impossible to live together in a society. And it's just going to lead to balkanization uh, collectivism, and a tearing apart of society. Uh, we don't necessarily have to go back to traditional societies. It was just a, another form of, that's just another form of tribalism with traditional values. But we have to move forward to a place of individualism and individual personal responsibility where each person is thinking things through and making free choices based as an expression of their I, of who they are as an individual. Uh, if we don't do that and start moving toward that, it's just going to lead to this balkanization, tribalism, and eventually the war of all against all. And it's going to really, you know, civilization is not going to survive this. So I consciousness, individuality, is the only way where we can start really voting on issues. I mean, that's the whole point. That's what democracy is supposed to be. It's supposed to be voters making free, intelligent choices and choosing the best people.